Hello, friends, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. And before we go a step further today, I have to say thank you to all of our listeners. There is some big news coming down the pipeline that I'm actually not allowed to tell you about right now. But you guys, all of you. People that listen to the Fort Worth Roots podcast, y'all really showed out. And I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for your support. The fact that you come back and you listen to these episodes every week is paramount. But the fact that you're willing to go out there and let other people know that you support the Fort Worth Roots podcast is also really, really important. And because of you, we've got some really exciting news. I said really a lot. (laughs) But thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, what are we, three and a half years into this? And it has become an obsession. It, <laughs> I love uh, every bit of this. But you guys are driving me. You're pushing me forward into the next chapter of the Fort Worth Roots podcast. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think within about six weeks, I'll be able to tell you what I'm talking about. But I was actually point blank told. I can't talk about it, so we'll wait. That's all right, but good stuff. And thank you again for listening to the Fort Worth Roots Podcast. You can find this episode and every other episode we've done in our catalog on multiple streaming services, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many other ones. And at the beginning of every episode, we like to highlight one of our sponsors, and then at the end of the episode, we're going to give you a special treat today. You get to listen to the music played in studio here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast Studio by David Tribble, and uh, we're going to talk about some of our sponsors that are helping us keep the lights on, as well as some upcoming events. By the way, March 30th, mark your calendars, at Pouring Glory. We're kicking off the season. The Fort Worth Roots podcast music series starts March 30th at Pouring Glory. There's going to be a vendor market, and it's all put on by PG Southside Market. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't miss it. We're going to have the gray out there with Max Cusin and his homies, uh, as well as another incredible artist uh, brought to us by Maria Uh, Our friend that puts on these events out there at the Southside Street Market. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So please mark that on your calendar. Again, that is March 30th at Pouring Glory. Roofing Solutions by Darren Houck. You can find them at roofingsolutionshauck.com. 817-882-6520 is the phone number. Tell them that uh, you heard about them on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. And they will give you 50% off a roofing tune up. Today's episode is one that should have happened a long time ago. If you'll, if you'll wait till the very end of the episode, we have three songs that were played uh, right here in the Fort Worth Roots podcast studio. And uh, I would encourage you to go check out the YouTube video. Uh, it showcases the studio. We got it set up looking kind of cool. I, I'm proud of it. And I think you might like it too. So that's enough talking out of me. Say hello to our new friend, David Tribble. And let's start the show. <laughs> Folks, thank you for joining us. I'm here with David Tribble. Did I say it right? You nailed it, man. Nice. Okay, good deal. Uh, had you on stage here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast Studio. That was awesome. You're thank clearly you. a very talented man. You're the second artist to play on that stage, but you will be the first artist, uh, provided there are no other mistakes, issues, or problems, to be on stage here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast and have it actually air. There we, we go. We did this with... Uh, uh, Keegan McEnroe a couple weeks, a few weeks ago, and I went home to uh, put the episode together, and I dropped the hard drive off the table, oh, no. and I lost the entire episode. So oh. we, we did all that with Keegan, lost every bit of it. My heart's breaking for you, Keegan. <laughs> I love you, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we got to get Keegan back in here. Or if you would like to donate $3,000 to have the data recovery uh, take take place uh, so that we can <laughs> regain four years worth of data. Uh, hit us up, media at mm. We are taking donations up to or more than $3,000. Have mercy. 
Mm. Yeah, when they hit me with that price tag, I'm like, eh, it's gonna, we're going to have to wait on that. It's gracious. Sorry. So uh, let's start off talking about this uh, event that you're going to tonight. You've got a gig tonight at, what, 6, you said? Yeah, man. Yeah, at Magnolia Motor Lounge, kind of a home court for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been hanging out there ever since I moved on my side of town. Is this your residency? Camp Bowie. Uh, I had a residency there at the end of the last year. Okay. Uh, I don't have one now, but uh, I'm kind of a part of the – the group that's there on Tuesday nights for songwriter okay. night. Right on. I'm just, just building a community of songwriters, man. And, and that's a huge hub to do that mm-hmm. because they're so supportive for original music and just that community that we're building. So talking about Magnolia motor lounge. Yeah. Magnolia, right the mags, uh, Graylin Smith over there, man. He's, he's, he's just a, a wonderful guy who's, uh, got a great venue. I and, dig uh, the new space. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I look at his, you know, the people that go there are going there for the reason that they're supposed to be there for instead of just kind of drifting through and maybe, you know, not benefiting a whole lot to you're, the place. You're referring to, like, the 7th Street you days. Being on the 7th Street yeah. days, yeah. Across um, from Varsity. Yeah, dude. The worst thing to ever happen to Fort Worth. Well, you know, <laughs> it's not happening now, so. Yeah, they closed it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so I think, you know, it's just a – just they need to have a really good year. I hope that they really have a good year and, um, you know – I, I'm grateful for tonight's show. I'm open for Red Shahan. Awesome. Um, I'm stoked, man. You know, who else bring, is playing that bill? Bringing the band. It's just me. Oh, opening, okay. And then he's he's headlining. Nice. So, yeah, uh, I try to invite people out to that Tuesday night thing, and it's such a great opportunity for young songwriters to get their new songs out there and test them out, and you know, yeah. just work through them. And then, on top of that, I have started a songwriting group about uh august of last year called uh singer songwriter coffee and collective um and so this also at magnolia it's at common grounds oh, at tcu okay. we, we meet over there with all the tcu guys i mean it's it's a great space they have a stage there which is another reason that i'm i'm kind of poking around there so maybe hopefully we can get a showcase at some point mm-hmm. and you yeah. know i've talked to them about it so um keep knocking down that door and see what happens but yeah we've we've been able to grow and people have been ha- come to hang out you know and it's mainly i meet people at gigs all the time at, yeah. at the bar and things like that and it's just like i can't really have a conversation that's going to mean anything with you at a bar it's too and loud. so it's too much going on come on man you know let's let's meet let's hang out friday morning 10 o'clock you can kind of sleep in i mean for songwriters it's okay. Ten, 10 o'clock's o'clock. still pretty I, early. I, like, right? I mean, for artists, I don't know. Some I, artists. <laughs> I guess I'm a little past it since I've, you know, been waking up at seven for the last twenty years. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, uh, it's been a really cool thing, man. And I just decided to invite people over, you know, socials, and just say, hey, hey, this is where we're gonna be. This is what we're gonna do. Come on, hang out. Let's let's get together and and make this community tight. You know, nice. uh, how can we help each other? You know, what do I have something that benefits you? Vice versa. You know, um, and a lot of the guys are younger, which is which is cool. I mean, I've been doing this a long time and full time for the last two years, but just building that the whole entire for the last fifteen years. You know, building that, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, man, it feels great. It's it's been a blessing, and it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a branch off of here Fort Worth yeah. is what it is. I mean, I've been so inspired by what here Fort Worth is doing and how they're so supportive to the the arts community. Yeah, that's in Tom, general. Tom Martin, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, video, art, uh, music, whatever it is. Um, it's just he's behind it all here in Fort yeah. Worth. Yeah. And I was like... One of our big players, for sure. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he's the MVP, man. Can and you real quick tell us about this last... Uh, what was it? The What do they call it? The address to the city? City address? Oh, yeah. The the town hall meeting. Town hall meeting. <laughs> Monday. That just uh, happened. You said the mayor was there? Mayor. Mayor was there. That's so Maya awesome. Yeah. yeah, dude. She was... So for folks that don't know, uh, Tom Martin uh, puts on a mixer the first Tuesday of every month. Is that right? Yeah. Now this one you said happened on a Monday. Yeah, this actually. So this is a know-how thing. So he does know-hows and mixers. The know-how is basically inform- informative information. Oh, okay. Where he brings someone in that's beneficial to the arts 
community mm-hmm. and they share and they and they inform right. you of something and then okay. they, you know they they bring in food and they bring in drinks and it's just a really cool time to network at the same time yeah like the mixer but it's more like hey i'm coming to get yeah you know instead of give a give a ton i'm, I'm coming to get and uh and grow notepads, and grow business cards yeah oh. i mean the mixer is definitely networking 100 percent um but the the know-how thing has been good, and it's at printed threads. And the mixers just bounce around a different. Okay, vi- so different they always venues. do that at printed threads. <sighs> yes. Okay, I've been to one of those, and I didn't realize that there was a a difference because I'm an idiot. But <laughs> that's good to know. Two idiots in one room, man. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this weekend you also. Uh, we're part of a new event. I, this is the first time they've done this down in the stockyards, right? Second year. Second year. Mm-hmm. Tell us what it's called. Fort Worth Music Festival. Okay. And this is largely put on by Tim Love and his organization. Yeah, Tim Love um, Ranch was a sponsor. Um, uh, That's the radio <laughs> Larry station. Joe, Larry Joe Taylor was okay. right in the mix. Um, you know, so, man, it's a cool deal. Fort Worth Superstars. Yeah. 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 And what all... Uh, did that include what what was going on there uh well there was a conference the first three days it was it was conference and shows Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of panels and there was a lot of information given out from the experts and the guys that are that are high up you know that are festival bookers and talent buyers and you know uh a lot of fort worth musicians there rubbing shoulders a lot of fort worth musicians there in attendance, which is good to see, uh, a lot of venue owners too. Nice, because they had they had artist breakouts and then they had industry breakouts to benefit both sides of it. Man, it was it was fantastic. It was just open to the public; anybody could come. Yeah, if you buy a ticket, yeah, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there was a price involved. Yeah, uh, but dude, it was it was fantastic, and um, I was really grateful. I got money to well go. spent. Yeah. I got to go um, as a as a part of here Fort Worth. I got to go. Nice. So, really cool. And, um, hopefully next year I can play it. You know, shout out to Tom Martin. We really appreciate what you're doing. And, uh, I love you, Tom. I've caught up with him a couple of times and hope that we can uh, find some way to uh, support you and uh, make sure that that continues because what Tom's doing is one of those things that's really important. I know I was name dropping earlier talking about some of the folks in town that are uh, you know, really trying to make sure that the local music scene – uh, not only stays vibrant, but you know, uh, continues to grow. Yeah, and Tom's one of those people, and and Brendan, a lot of respect. Uh, Brendan Anthony, mm-hmm. uh, the guy that is the director um, over at Texas Music Office, mm-hmm. wearing his hat. Not familiar um, with him yet. We hadn't talked. They were there, man. Okay, they were there. He drove up from Austin to be there. We got Austin people. <laughs> well, he, you know, <laughs> you know, who Brendan Anthony is. You're gonna have to help me out. He played. Uh, Fiddle for Pat Green for oh okay ten ten years right on more than that. Um, so he he's such a cool dude. I met him at Americana Fest uh, a couple years back, and um, yeah, so it's so much support, man. Yeah, and Fort Worth is the flagship for the a Texas music city. Yeah, we are the flagship. I mean, we were the first, and we got it going on. Yeah, you know, and that's what he said. He's like, look how many people are here. That's a that's a healthy sign that we're on the right track, right? You know, despite what's happening, I mean, there's a lot of negativity going on with the venues closing and things, but but the but the growth of the city is not <laughs> it's still it's not going. The problem. Yeah. It's not the problem. So well, we've we've talked a lot about that on this show, and I think a lot of what happened it was it was really scary because you just show you you could see uh, venues shutting their doors left and right, but after digging into it and talking to folks, um, I think the biggest problem. It, the economy has a lot to do with it, and this is just one idiot's advice or opinion. Um, it just seemed like exhaustion. Mm. Like these places were shutting down because they're just like, shit, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. Honest to God. The numbers were about the same, and that in and of itself is a problem because the cost had gone up, and the reports that I, were see- that I was seeing, um, they were making about the same money mm. year over year, but the expense was more. And it's yeah. harder to get people to come to work now for some reason. And you know, at a, at a certain point, somebody walks up and gives you an offer on that building or, 
you know, yeah. maybe the maybe the lease uh, is is up for renewal, and they're going to jack the price up. And that's like, that's I'm, what I've heard more about. I'm just yeah. out. Yeah. If you don't own a building, then it's dangerous territory. Hundred yeah. percent, because they can take that building that you've been paying maybe five thousand a month on, yeah. and crank it up to fifteen twenty thousand dollars a month, and you're going. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm done here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's not necessarily that people aren't going out. Yeah. Um, I I think that, you know, as uh, good citizens of Fort Worth and people that appreciate live music and want to support small business, we should make sure that it's in the forefront of our mind to go out and support these places. But yeah, it's it's not... It's it's not the traffic like these people are... These businesses are making about what they were the last couple, two or three yeah. years. Um, but... I, th- I yeah, look at it strange. As, yeah, I look at it like if you're a food truck, you're gonna you're gonna precisely go where traffic is, and if they're not there, you're gonna leave. Yeah. You got to make a risk, and you say, "Yeah, this is really de- this is really dead. We yeah. got to go somewhere yeah. else. We got to you know spend an hour looking or whatever, but it's gonna be worth it." And I feel like some of the some of that's going on with some of the venues. I mean, areas are flourishing, and then they're not. You know, yeah. and um, it's nice when your business is on wheels and you can just. Well, it is, <laughs> but it gets a lot more complicated when it's not. And yeah. um, you know, the post it comes to mind. Which mm. I love the post. I've been so grateful to play there in the last couple of years. That's the kind of situation for them. And and uh, Brooks Kendall, and he's going to come back swinging. You yeah. know, he's going to find a new place, and it's going to be fantastic. So I'm excited for for that next chapter. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard talk of them shopping around. So yeah. we will yeah. see a reemergence of that no doubt. that vibe. I don't know if they're gonna call it the post two, but <laughs> it'll have the vibe. Yeah, no the doubt. vibe will be there for yeah. sure. And that was such a great, you know, potentially iconic Fort Worth location. It'd only been around for what, three years, but such a great space. It was. Badass. And I, I have seen some incredible shows there. Hey, I, I was talking about Avery earlier. Mm-hmm. I saw one of her shows there. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Just Man. a great space. Some of the best um, shows I've had. All right, so we're all caught up on the uh, the the talk of the town, the Fort Worth happenings. Let's get a uh, let's get into David a little bit. Tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from originally? I was born in Texarkana. Right on. So got uh, out of there as fast as you could. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm a Razorback fan, so okay, it stuck with me. My dad uh, was from Nashville, Arkansas, and uh, so I spent a good, I don't know. Eight years, six years there, and nice. growing up, and and then we we moved to Sherman, Texas. Uh, so that's where I kind of did most of my raising up. Is that next, that's east of Tyler, isn't it? It's north of Dallas. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm way off. Yeah, it's 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 really close to Red River. It's it's not okay. far from Durant and all that. You know, okay. Oklahoma world. So, um, so yeah, uh, pretty pretty chill. Uh, you know childhood my parents you know divorced when i was in middle school and just kind of real shy kind of kid and two christmases and eventually i just you know d- decided that i'm gonna be uh, yeah, i'm gonna enjoy myself and be enjoy the life that we've given you know i'm not gonna i'm not just gonna stay reserved you know and and I mean, I was I was a big nerd. I mean, honestly, you know, and made had some some people that didn't like me too much. You know how it goes. Star Trek or Star Wars? Ooh. Trek, I think. You like both worlds, both universes. Yeah, the war. I mean, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I wasn't. I was more like I look like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you know okay you're not an actual uh, I, I was out catching crawdads in the creek and, play, and riding my bike and doing all the cool you know guys boy things That's but I, I, was, stuff, yeah. I was definitely uh you know tall skinny little lanky little boy with wearing some red <laughs> red rim glasses around you know blonde hair but okay you weren't going to comic con <laughs> no man i was a goofball <laughs> uh still am but anyway I, I man i went to college uh junior college and i just started to see uh, my faith is very important to me, 100%. And I started to see people in, uh, like, Baptist student ministries that I was a part of. I just started seeing a difference in those people. And, I, you know, I'd been raised in church, but I was, like I said, I was a goofball kid, man, and I did, I did not soak it up like I should. Yeah. Um, I started to see God, like, 
just in these people and i just was like man i love i love the way these people are are you know and uh i just wanted to kind of so the lord just kind of started working on me on my just being more comfortable and you know uh i was just kind of like know who you are accept it and get good at it and that was my motto for a while like know who you are accept it it only goes so far right i mean you are who you are you, yeah. some things you can't change and just get good at it just just be comfortable with it and get good at it and just present it you know be yourself you know and um be comfortable and enjoy your life it's it can be short you know and and uh that's kind of grown throughout the the years and man i just i'm kind of social butterfly guy i love people i love meeting new people um and in the music world that's been helpful you know um i didn't really think about that but that's really been beneficial and because so it's about relationships where did your uh kind of passion with music start was it Oh, uh, in the church, man. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't want anything to do it was when I was a kid, but I was in church choirs and I was, you know, my parents were, they were kind of pushing me in that direction. I, I was in, I took guitar lessons, piano lessons, I had nothing to do with it. Just as quickly as I could get out of there and go outside and play. <laughs> uh, but when I turned 18, like I said, my parents had been split up and what I started doing to just deal with some of those emotions from, you know, being in two different households and having that, you know, with my brother and my sister, yeah. I started writing in a journal. Okay. And I do believe that that benefited me hugely in what I'm doing now as a songwriter. Um, just being able to put words on a page that come straight from my heart without even thinking about it. Like, I'm just dumping it. You know, and some days I, I remember I would just scribble on that print on that daggum notebook because I was, I was just mad. You know. Yeah. Um, so just learning how to healthy do, uh, express myself in a healthy way. This is your self-taught therapy. I guess, man. <laughs> you know, I've always always been just a, a doodler and stuff like that too. So <laughs> I just, I just started scribbling words, and you know, eventually when I was about eighteen, seventeen. I picked up the guitar, my stepdad's guitar, and taught myself three chords and from a book that was in a piano bench. And <laughs> dude, that was it, man. I mean, like, I started writing songs pretty soon after, and I never stopped, man. And it's just got it got in me at that point, man. And I was just like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, I want to do this as much as, as possible. And... And then I started playing in church. You know, I was I was uh, got into the worship space, and uh, I was playing guitar unplugged in a band, unplugged, mind you. Okay, he's like, "Yeah, you can play with us. Just we're not plugging you in." I was like, <laughs> "Okay, <laughs> going through the motions here." Okay, dude, I'm cool. I did not care, man. And uh, one day he goes, "I'm not. I'm not gonna be there. You're gonna. You're gonna lead. You're gonna lead." I was like, "Okay." Uh, it was a train wreck mind you uh but <laughs> i did it i did it you, you know what I mean? that, right? like, yes of course uh, and so that kind of got me into it and he was a great dude and i went to Stephen f austin shout out to the lumberjacks and uh really had some great experiences out there started being like i don't care what people think about this song i'm gonna sing it anyways if you don't like it, cool. I don't care. I'm gonna play, go to a talent show or an open mic, and I'm just gonna do what I do and <laughs> act silly. And you know, uh, just I was experiencing the guitar and I was learning the guitar at that point. I wasn't like, I wasn't on YouTube. I wasn't on like a bunch of like, I want to play this right. No, I just figured it out. If it sounded cool, I played it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was playing with my ear more than anything, which I'm so grateful for to have an ear. Uh, because I don't think I have the discipline to do it any other way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, man, just more opportunities started coming around. And then I guess I just felt like, oh, I can go to a coffee shop and play play these songs and maybe get paid a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, okay, cool. I, I, I want to maybe check that out and see how that goes. And I was teaching school from 2001 up to 2016. I mean, I, I, I got into <laughs> teaching school. My dad was, you know, talked to me and said, "Hey, man, you gotta get out of, you gotta get out of Nacogdoches, Texas, because you have a degree, <laughs> and you've been there for about eight months doing nothing but mowing lawns and hanging out with your friends. 
He's like, yeah, get home, come home and get a job <laughs> and start teaching school. I'm like, oh, all right, that's that's fair. Let's do it. So 15, 16 years of teaching, did you have a subject that you Science. Taught? Okay. Yeah, it's the only thing I could ever see myself what teaching. What grade level? Middle school. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Playing with beakers and. Yeah, yeah, beakers and, you know, I. I didn't like the life earth, life science as much as I liked the earth science. Yeah. I, I had a minor in geo- geology. Uh-huh. So I like getting in the dirt and the rocks and stuff. But, yeah. man, when it come to, like, dissections and stuff, man, I was like, hey, we'll skip that. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> we, I, think I, I think I teamed up with a bunch of people to do that with teachers and be like, let's, let's do this together. Did y'all do uh, frogs? or? I think we did frogs a few times, and uh, I don't think we did anything else. It's the only dissection I've ever done yeah, this, in a classroom setting. Yeah, dude. I can still smell the formaldehyde. formaldehyde. Yeah, it was it was rough, man. I didn't like it. It's gross. It's terrible. Owl pellets were my favorite, man. <laughs> okay. Give me a give me owl poop and let me dissect it. Take that crap apart. Take oh. the bones out. You know that was the best one. Look a penny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, tell them what you'd find there. Yeah. So I was a coach too. Uh, I, I kind of was an athlete, semi athlete. I was like a like a baseball coach. Oh, Dude, I did coach baseball for two years. I can see it. It was wild, man. I've I mean, got that aura. I drove the bus. I was like <laughs> wearing the pants, man. I was like, I was in it. You know, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I was single too, so I had just oh, all the time in okay. the world yeah. to just be a coach and just be out there two a days. I was football coach. I never played football. I maybe the only coach you ever talked to that never played football that coached <laughs> it for ten years. A decade, never played I the sport. Never it's played hilarious. a lick of down a football except for in my backyard, which is pretty rad in my backyard. <laughs> well, you don't need that. You just need to know the drills, right? Yeah, dude. I was an offensive coordinator, man. I was yeah. calling the plays, man. Oh, shit. It was rad. Yes. <laughs> I was. I had a blast with it. Um, you feel like you were pretty good at it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I mean, you got to You got to Boy, you got to get after it, you know. There's no second guessing, you know. Mm-hmm. You got to get those plays in and out and you got to make decisions and live with what you got and mm-hmm. m- m- work around the situation. So it was it was cool, man. It was, it was fun. Any tense conversations with some overzealous uh, parents after the game? So Jonathan Gray is a – We're name dropping. He played for UT. <laughs> Okay. He play, well, he went to Alito, so okay. as soon as he got out of eighth grade, and he was like a man-child. I mean, he was amazing. Uh, he <laughs> went to Alito and won like four state championships. No, he did. I mean, wow. my wife was in Alito teaching, uh-huh. and so we would go and see him and be like, oh, we're in state again? Cool, let's go watch him. And there we go. I mean, another state championship in Alito. And uh, I still have his signature. I was like, hey, Jonathan. Remember me? He's like, oh yeah, Coach Triple. Hey, sign this, sign my hat, you know. And I still have it, you know. Nice. But he's 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 a good dude. He's I think he's doing some some like training, some personal training okay. for some athletes and things like that around town. So he's still around. Um, Did he take it to, to college level? But he went or? to UT. Yeah, but he but he was he uh, hurt his Achilles. Ah shit. Yeah, yeah that's dude. a that's a showstopper. And it right? just went downhill from there and. Uh, it was it was unfortunate. That, that, that'll put you six nine months out of out of practice, right? Yeah, man. And there was a bunch of good running backs that year for him, and mm. it just it just didn't go his way. Um, but yeah, so I took him out of the game one time mm-hmm. because he did exactly what I told him not to do. He 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 lit out there and went out there and called his own play. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, you're out. And his parents were just heckling me from the. They're like, you can't take him out. You're I'm crazy. like, I mean, I get. Your, your point, you know, but I know what I'm I doing. gotta I gotta be the coach at the same time. I right. know I can pretty much give him the ball and he can score at uh-huh. any point. Um, but we still won. Nice. I mean, it didn't really yeah. affect De- the devastating outcome. move for the team, but <laughs> you, you still gotta yeah, still that's, gotta hold him accountable. That's right. Got that's it. right. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, that's good because I I think a lot of uh, coaches that are just looking for that win would probably just and that's no good yeah. for him, right? Well, that, sure. That's yeah. going to damage his character. I mean, I can and, do what I want because I'm good enough. Yeah, and it it wouldn't have gone over well either with other players either. Probably, you yeah. Know, it's like, yo, know, you let him do whatever he wants. Yep. Could have no, altered their perspective no. as well. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not playing favorites here, right? Good, you good know? call, coach. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> and then, so my daughter was born in the middle of football season. Okay. So football season was out for me. Inconvenient. I said, all right, <laughs> find me something else to coach. Because football's not working. 
I am way too busy with football, and I'm a dad now, so let me move on. Yeah. And so I taught cross country. Okay. All right, coach, cross country and tennis. Ooh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> that, that seems difficult. They were the two easiest things to coach. Tennis? I mean, yeah, because no one else really, not that many people came out for tennis. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, that year was a little more than normal, I guess, because they were like, oh, it's not an old lady teaching tennis. It's, me, it's Coach Tribble. I was like, yeah, come on. Let's go. I mean, Look, I, I love tennis. tennis. I yeah. played. I, I, co- I played tennis, and I took tennis in college, and then I played it just for fun. But it was fun. I mean, I just did it for a couple of years, and then I just recently became aware of pickleball. I haven't played it yet. I haven't either. What's, feel like I what's this about? People are. It. I've never heard of it before, and I feel like people are just jumping on the bandwagon. I ran into a guy the other day. He's like, "Yeah, pickleball saved my life." I'm like, "What is pickleball?" Wow. <laughs> What is pickleball? No, you can go to college on a scholarship or something, I think, now. <laughs> really? There's professional pickleball players, dude. So, I don't know if you're on the, the hot goss uh, for Weatherford. It's close enough to Fort Worth that it, you might. I used to be out in, in Weatherford. So, there was this whole thing where the city or some department was wanting to put in a pickleball court. And mm. they, it went to a vote. And people were out in the streets like, no. No pickleball court. Really? We need money for this and that. And what the hell is pickleball? Well, anyway, I'm a concrete truck driver, and we were out there pouring the pickleball court <laughs> no, <yeah>. yesterday. <laughs> so it, I apparently it went through. Okay. But Dude, I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with a pickleball court. I don't really see a problem with it either, but it's like, it just, it's this new thing, and it's just like, oh, I know. Yeah. Force. Pickleball. Yeah. I mean, you can eat dinner and play pickleball at the same time now. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to wait 45 minutes, coach? Uh, I don't think it matters. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think. Pickleball broke all the rules. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. Folks, Fort Worth Roots is looking for a pickleball enthusiast to, to come out and explain this yeah, nonsense. Yeah, out, man. <laughs> never, never got any so da- David, uh, at what point did you, did you make it to Fort Worth and uh, start gigging at some of the local places here? You remember? It's been a long time ago. I see Man. those wheels turning. I got smoke coming out the ears. I mean, it. So when I was teaching school and I was coaching, Friday nights were out. Like, yeah, cause I was I was yeah. scouting or I was you know coaching or helping coach or whatever. And so Saturday nights I would play. And man, I I, I know I the first gig I can remember having at, around here was in Grand Prairie. Okay, <laughs> at the coffee grinder, and. uh that's the first gig I can remember having, and then, oh gosh, I got a I got a residency at a Saltwater in Weatherford. Okay. Speaking of Weatherford, so I was I used to be on Weatherford. Still there? A lot. No, it's not. Okay, but uh, I it's think a they're barbecue joint. working yeah. on it's Sheps. It's the owners of Sheps. Okay, so okay. they gave me like a weekly residency on a Tuesday night there, and it's I got probably still rough for you, right? I it was great. Yeah. No, dude, Tuesday night. Yeah. Kidding me? That was fantastic. I got free fried shrimp every time. <laughs> best fried shrimp I've ever had in my life. Hey, uh, the best fried shrimp is free shrimp. Yes. Yeah, and it was just great, dude. I was just in a corner, and people were hanging out. I still have people say, hey, man, I remember seeing you <laughs> at Saltwater. <laughs> I was like, oh, goodness. Um, so that was that was like my first residency, and, uh, man, I just, just – trickled around here and there you know um and then i got a residency at firehouse gastro park in grand prairie okay uh been amazing experience and uh relationship with those guys um so i'm still there every month you know got a residency there and um fort worth played a ton of places in fort worth in the last five or six years um more and more i mean fort worth was a harder Honestly, it was harder to get into those venues because yeah. it's it's really saturated around here, mm-hmm. and and that's just the facts, you know. Yeah. And that's why people are like so amazed at, at the talent around it. It's like, man, a ton of talent in this town. Sure, there there is, and but you know, if you're looking for gigs, that <laughs> that boils over. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, building relationships, going outside of town. And getting gigs and then working my way in, right? Yeah. Finding that door that that was the door I needed to walk through. It wasn't the front door. You know, I wasn't from Fort Worth. I don't feel like it made sense for, 
for Fort Worth to be like. So I just had to kind of warm up to 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 who David Triple is. Yeah, and um, and I was cool with that, man. You know, I was provided all these outside areas to kind of work through, and <clears throat> um, and now, man, you know, Fort Worth is amazing and supportive, and just we're we're kind of doing this thing, you yeah. know. And you're Together. full time now, right? I'm full time, man. Yeah, uh, about two years. That's awesome. Yeah, I work at a church as well. So, man, worship, like I said, worship has always kind of been a part of my journey, and that's where I started, and I, I do that now, and that's been a blessing. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah. And so, would so you consider that a residency? Definitely. Yeah. In the Lord's <laughs> residency, my friend. Uh, it's Burleson, South Burleson Baptist Church. Okay. Yeah. And for the last 10 years, I've been on and off different churches. Yeah. Uh, I haven't like landed at one and we just stayed forever. So we're kind of, and I kind of have found my way into getting into revitalization, revitalization, like uh-huh. coming to churches where like, okay, here's the new guy. The old guy was like waving his arms like a bird and, you know, had a choir and was playing hymns all you know yeah for the so these churches are like realizing they got to shift gears yeah and i mean i'm not the most contemporary dude you know wearing the skinniest jeans <laughs> and the jordans <laughs> and the you know whatever but not to not to knock that but i'm just i'm just being silly yeah. uh, uh, i don't know but, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should knock it i mean but it's like all right so that has been interesting man cuz some people are like yeah, who is this guy I don't like this. I mean, and it's and they leave or they they you know we have you know we have to get get to know those people. Um, but yeah, it's been that way for about the last three places I've been, man. Yeah, it's been interesting, but mm. it's been good. It's been a good fit for me, you know. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. I love hymns. Don't get me wrong. I mean, but we can't sit around and turn a page three hundred and four every time, you know. And <laughs> what's three hundred four? I don't know, but I put it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. The I used reason. to have them memorized because you know all those hymn books, they uh, they they seem to all have the same page numbers. Okay. Well, I, and I don't know if that's just like I just kept finding the same hymn book when I'd go to these different churches. Yeah. Or maybe that's just a Church of Christ thing. I don't know. What? But it it seemed like the page number was like the same song every church you went to. Really? Okay. To I me. didn't ever pay attention. Well, it's funny I say that because I'm written a song just just fresh like two days ago, and I actually used that lyric. Three hundred four. Everyone turn to page three hundred four. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm curious what three hundred four is. If so you know, please let us know. Media at in. Fort Worth yeah. Roots dot com is our email. <laughs> I am so curious to in figure your out hymn what book. Song what is three hundred four? Because <laughs> three hundred four should be there, right? Uh, yeah, there's it enough. It goes that long. I think, uh, yeah, like, I want to say, like, 333, 334 is, is the highest I okay. remember, but... Okay. Surely, I thought 300 was... Nobody's making new hymns anymore, are they? No, nah, man. It's all, like, They're it's all sitting basically there in a, a Bible. Dusty. Somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few at our church. I had to look it up and see. What That's so funny. We're going to get to the bottom of this, for sure. <laughs> for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I I started wanting to kind of do like segments inside of these episodes where I ask crazy questions that uh, kind of expose a little bit more about our guests. But uh, Fire t- away. Typically what we've been asking during these episodes, and uh, we'll get you back on for some real silly questions on the next episode with uh, <laughs> David Tribble. But uh, can you tell us maybe what your favorite restaurant is here in Fort Worth? Is there a place that you, you really love to go whenever you're looking for a good meal you know um if it's if it's my wife and i we needed we need some food at home and we you know DoorDash something we go to like thai select we'll get some thai food man just thai in general i mean i'm not picky about thai food i love it <laughs> i mean spice spice was honestly spice was like one of the first places i had thai food mm-hmm. so shout out to spice because spice is like amazing food where are they at they're over there on that uh hospital district my magnolia oh, okay on that oh the are you, east side are they still there it's on magnolia yeah i'm pretty sure is it still there i think so yeah okay. there's, there's a little apartment a, complex behind it yeah there's a couple of little places right there there's that another place. i really liked and uh one of them two of them closed right there on magnolia oh did one they? was attached to the a bar the bar was badass and the restaurant was badass and i think I, th- I want to say they might have closed, like Maggie's yeah. or something. 
Not Maggie's R and R. I don't know. I'm getting my details mixed up. Yeah, but I yeah, think spice great there food would, on Magnolia. Yeah, dude. Uh, we used to go to Brood a lot. You know, mm-hmm. that was a cool yeah. spot. Um, man, I mean, gosh, where do we go? I mean, uh, you really can just walk up and down Magnolia. There's so many great places. Go have dinner uh, here. Have a drink down at the what, what's that grungy little bar there on the corner? It's been around forever. I'll say like the local or that's not know. right. I it's been know. there forever. Has it? Yeah. It's got weird stories. Some of them not great. <laughs> Fair. But there's there's lots of little cool little bars there on Magnolia and lots of great places to eat. Yeah. Nah, man. I mean, Thai food all day, man. Just I'll say zero spice, though. Zero. Don't. Because I know I'm going to get a spice. On the heat level, right? Yeah, because zero <laughs> means... <laughs> White boy normal. Right, right. You know I got to blow mean? on like, my mayonnaise to cool it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if if I say, oh, let me just go one or two. No, <laughs> no. I'm going zero white boy normal. <laughs> give me give me that. I mean, it's going to be hot still. So yes. I don't know how to tame, tame you, it down. Man. The older <laughs> so. I get, the, the harder I lean away from stuff. Dude, this is really embarrassing, but I'm going to tell you and our listeners right now. Uh, Chick-fil-A has a spicy deluxe sandwich. Yeah. I can't eat it anymore. Yeah. It's not even that spicy. <laughs> hey, will, man, I'm with it, you, dude. It will jack me up for half a day. Yeah, I'm not, I can't do it. I'm not into it. Isn't that man. sad? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm old enough now that I get on roller coasters, and I'm like, that hurt. That hurt real bad. <laughs> we just got back from Universal Studios like a month ago, Oh. and we got on uh, the Hulk. Okay. It's one of those rides that shoots you out the tunnel, and then it's oh an ass-kicking for a solid Mm-mm. two minutes. No, thank you. By the time we got off of that, man, I was dizzy, nauseous. I hurt, and I was kind of jacked up the rest of the day. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right, universe, I get it. Feel like I'm done. <laughs> Last time we do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oof. Well, brother, I know you got your gig coming up tonight, and uh, I appreciate so much. I know you and I have kind of talked a little bit here and there over the past year or so. We finally got a chance to yeah. nail this down, so thank you. Yeah, man, thank you for welcoming me um, in. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, and can we get you back on the show sometime? Sure. And feel welcome to bring friends with you if you want. We got this set up so that it's, you know, accommodating to two yeah. or three guests. So Definitely. All right. Anything for our uh, listeners today that uh, that you'd like to, to tell them? Words of wisdom? Oh, man. Advice? Uh, mottos? I mean, I would just say. Laundry detergents to watch out for? <laughs> <laughs> I just say love who you got, man. You know, just. Appreciate, appreciate what you got because I was could always be, be different, yeah. you know, and you know, live in the moment, man. Be present. Gratitude, you know, love that. Know, balance, balance out your life as an artist, as a, as you know, with the for the family, with with the wife, uh, supportive man. You know, balance is is key. You know, yeah. in making it work. And I tell people, I said, you know, being a musician with with having a life on top of it man you know at at the end of the day it has to be worth it so you know whatever it is the sacrifice that it is that it takes it has to be worth it it just makes sense yeah you know and uh and if it doesn't man you know trust it you know trust the process trust the that you're making the right decision you know i mean not to redirect here but you know i i had the chance to be on a voice back in the day 2013 you know i auditioned i went to la did all the things Got a new outfit, you know, was ready to go back. Got the call, said, hey, you're, you can come back. And and it just wasn't, it wasn't right. Wow. It, it just, my man, I just, we, we battle over it, man. And just, I had a one-year-old at home. I had a teaching job. They needed me for three weeks in L.A. Yeah. Man, something about it just didn't, didn't fit, man. It didn't work. And my wife and I, we prayed and prayed and. Man, we just, I turned it down. Do you feel like maybe there was a, something that was said during that process that made you feel like, mm, I don't belong in this environment? It was more just a possibility of not having a job when I come back or, you know. Just, yeah, three weeks is a, that, I, that's a commitment. I had to be the man that I, that I signed up to be before I went on The Voice, like, yeah. which is a husband who provides, a husband who's there, you know, someone that a dad that was there and I just it just felt like the voice was gonna take away that in a big way and it just wasn't my time man you know yeah. 
Yeah. And timing is everything. I've been playing the long game, and but my dreams came true when I got to do this full time. I love to hear that you and your wife are operating with these decisions like as a team. That's awesome. Man, I try. People got to. I mean, we'll you got to do right that all right the time. But yeah, for sure, for sure. I don't. I tell people all the time, like I don't do this without her. Mm -hmm. her support i don't do this without her support i mean and, and because i signed up for what i signed up for when i married her you know i don't get to do what i want to do no matter what you know what i mean well i mean to your own peril too i mean it, it, the benefit well, yeah. of having two people working out a singular par problem is exactly monumental that's yeah. why i say it's got to make sense it's got to be worth it because there is going to be a sacrifice sure but both people had to be on board, and she's been so amazingly supportive, and she's an amazing mother, and I couldn't be any more happy to to have her as my biggest fan. Shout out, Mrs. Tribble. Mrs. Tribble. She's a teacher, too, dude. Okay. What subject? Third grade, dude. Third. Okay. Yeah. So she's, uh, right before they get super honorary. A little bit, yeah. Well, I she's mean, had, I'm, not, I'm not saying there's not problems. She got some honorary <laughs> ones, man. She's, I hear about it quite a bit. Uh, I'm sure. These boys, these boys are out of control, man. I'm like, do I just need to come in there and just have an intervention with those dudes? She's like, right. You, you can't, first of all. I'm like, are you sure? That's how you go to prison forever. I'm sure. Are you sure? Because I think it might do some good. You know, I kind of have some experience. Uh, right, right. But she's in the trenches. She's doing amazing oh, things. Man. And, that, that's a yeah. good way to put it, honestly. Like no, I, I got a lot of uh, you know compassion for our our teachers that the, the Shout things out to all that, the teachers yes man. the things that y'all have to do uh, with the lack of support from your administration who are just trying to cover their own asses. Mm -hmm. um, God bless you, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're doing it for the knuckleheads that they teach, man, and 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 in faith that they're 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 making a difference, and they are, you know. And, yes, absolutely. You know, pay the teachers more. Pay Dang the teachers it. more. And support and, them more. And for the parents out there, like, it ain't their fault, okay? Just oh, take care of business at the house. Stop blaming the teachers. Yeah. <laughs> Parenting's a full-time job, man. I said it. Parenting's a full-time job. <laughs> yeah. It's not a part-time job. Right. Don't drop them off at school thinking it's a daycare and then call the principal saying, I want to talk to the manager because my kid's not doing well. Man. Right. Yeah. So many things. It anyway. takes both sides. Respect, teachers out there. Mm -hmm. Y'all are, God, y'all deserve, yeah, more money, but they deserve a lot more respect. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a weird tangent that we just went on. I'm glad we did that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you already said we can have you back on the show. Yes. Okay. Where can people find your content? Where can we find your social media and your music? Uh, my website is davidtribble.com. That makes sense. And um, David Triple Music on Instagram, okay. Facebook, uh, Facebook, David Triple. So, man. All yeah. right. And we'll have it in the show notes uh, so that people can find your stuff. And one more time, you're, you, you mentioned uh, at least one residency other than the church. A Firehouse Gastro Park, uh, monthly there. Located uh, at? It's in Grand Prairie. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'm just I'm around, man. Okay. DavidTribble.com. And now that you've been on the show, we've introduced you to our listeners. Anytime you've got something that you want us to help you promote, and I've got lots of musicians that will just either tag me or send it to me directly, I will share it on our, our social media to help. Cool. Kinda. Now, I'm, I'm much more likely to share something if it's happening in Fort Worth. If you go to Dallas, there's a <laughs> very good chance I'm not going to share it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. If I if I feel like it's pulling on my heartstrings and I need to share it, I might. But we It's just, understandable. You know. <laughs> I get it, and I tag a lot of people, and sometimes it runs through my brain, so I yeah. totally understand that. Denton, Weatherford, Grand Prairie, Arlington, we're good. You start sharing stuff from Dallas, though, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Dallas has good, been good to me. I did, yeah. This all, whole DFW, yes. it lives in the same All of my musician friends my, start getting nervous when I start talking crap on Dallas. They're like, Whoa, wait, 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 wait. We got some <laughs> good gigs out there. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's a different, different breed out yeah, there, but, 100%. you know, it's... Music's still popping. Yeah. You know. Excellent. All right, brother. Well, let's get out of here. Anything else before we take off? Nah, man. I, I appreciate you very much. Brother, we appreciate you, and uh, let's get you on the show real soon. All, All right. right. See ya. David, thank you so much for being a guest on the Fort Worth Roots podcast. Guys, gals, listeners. Stay tuned here in just a moment. We're going to unleash 
the three songs that David played for us here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast Studio. By the way, if you're wondering, we have space here. We are always looking for ways to support the show. And if you are a, uh, a band, uh, if you need a place to rehearse, if you have art classes, if you're a photographer, for whatever reason, if you need this space, uh, we're here for it. So let me know. Our email is media at Fort Worth Roots. Dot com, And we are looking for more people to use this space. We want the Fort Worth Roots Podcast Studio to be kind of a utopia for creativity. So help me bring that to life. Oh, and uh, it's, uh, it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap, and the bathroom works. Are these good selling points? I don't know. Anyway, I dig it, and I think it'd be better if you were here. Media at FortWorthRoots.com. Let's talk about these sponsors. WoodPostMetalWorks.com. Offer code PODCAST817 will save you 10%. They, uh, they specialize in metal signs with or without LED backlighting, fence and gate repair, installation, light, steel fabrication, industrial plasma cutting, and more. Hulk Walker Originals. I actually had Angela at the studio today, the owner of Hulk Walker Originals. You can go to HalkWalker.com uh, to see what they're working on over there. Always interesting stuff. They got classes brewing uh, on custom signs that you can make for your home. They offer a huge variety of unique and personalized gifts. Also, laser engraving to customize just about anything you can think of. And this is the part where I usually tell people, like, hey, Spend your money locally. Keep Fort Worth dollars in Fort Worth pockets. You can get a lot of this stuff online from uh, India or other countries, (laughs) I think. But it's not going to be as good, and it's not going to come locally. And uh, you can do whatever it was you were going to do online right here in our backyard by going to Hulk Walker Originals. you got a party coming up. You need some customized stuff. You got a business and you want some customized uh, tumblers or etc. Go check it out. They can do it right here. You do not have to spend your money outside of our community. You can do it right here with absolutely roofing solutions. We went over that. Roofing solutions help.com. Okay, got that. All right, check. What's our next one? Let's talk about Wavy Digital. You got a Wavy Digital on Instagram at W A V V Y Digital. And, um, If you are a creator of any kind or a business owner and you need somebody to help you navigate social media, posting, updating, making sure that the community knows what you got going on at your business or helping you brand your music or your art, whatever it is, Wavy Digital can help you. Go to Instagram and go for at W-A-V-V-Y digital. And they can take care of you. Check that out. Pouring Glory, 1001 Bryan Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas, just off South Main Street. This place is awesome, and it's one of the ones we want to see succeed. It's the reason that I approached them as a sponsor, because I'd been going there for like five years before I ever even met Scott. I thought he was just the guy serving the food. I didn't know he was the owner. He's a hardworking dude. Never suspect that uh, he was the one running the place, the owner. So for five years, I was there eating burgers and drinking beer. had no idea that he was the one responsible for the amazing atmosphere. And then I finally talked to him, and uh, we've become pretty good friends. Love Scott and his entire crew over there. It's good people. It's great vibes. On the weekends, they do dog park Sundays. You can bring your fur baby. Let them socialize Saturday and Sunday. They close the gates up and let you uh, take the doggos off the leash and they can just run wild. Um, And that's a cool perk. That's a thing I like a lot about it. But the food and the beer selection is incredible. It's one of my favorite places to eat here in Fort Worth. And uh, not just saying this, as soon as I pack up my roadcaster tonight, over here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast Studio. I'm heading over there because I want a burger. And they got the best one in town. So go check them out. Pouring Glory is located at 1001 Bryan Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas. It's over there uh, kind of in the armpit of I-35 and I-30. The armpit. Something you probably don't want somebody to say if they're talking about your restaurant. But they're over there in the armpit, guys. 
Go check it out. McFly's Pub, 6104 LTJG Barnett Road, Fort Worth, Texas. It is a 1980s Back to the Future themed bar with a very impressive outdoor area, fire pit. Hang out and bring some friends for pool, darts, cornhole, jumbo, Jenga, and catch a live event. Every Tuesday, Tommy Luke puts on the open mic, and uh, it's a lot of fun. No cover charge for this kind of stuff. Go in there, check it out, have a great time, meet some wonderful people. Um, River Oaks is the neighboring city. It's so funny. River Oaks is just this tiny little community wrapped uh, around by Fort Worth. Like it's, it's just kind of, it's the donut hole. Okay. Pouring glory is in the armpit and uh, McFly's is in the donut hole. It's in the donut, in the middle of the donut. Fort Worth is the donut and McFly's is the hole. Go to the hole. Go to McFly's pub. That's always a plus. Cowtown. Nutrition. Don't forget about them. They're always doing fun stuff over there at 5430 River Oaks Boulevard. You can find them on Instagram at Cowtown underscore nutrition. They offer a healthy alternative to that compulsory fast food craving. You can also load up on your favorite Herbalife products and learn about their fitness groups that they hold on location at Cowtown Nutrition. Uh, March 30th. We're going to be out there at Pouring Glory, Maria, with uh, PG Southside Market, has put on another amazing event. And this is really, this is kicking off not only springtime, not only uh, vendor market season, but it's also kicking off the Fort Worth Roots music series. And we have had some complications. There have been multiple scheduling issues. Uh, but we are plowing through it. We're going to get it done. And we are almost complete with the details. And I keep telling you guys, like, okay, this week we're going to have it. Anyway, I need to not make promises based on other people's schedules. And uh, we're working on it. But I'm going to try to put something out this week so you guys know what's up. But starting March 30th, the beginning of our music series, we got Max Cusin on stage. The band is called... The Gray, G-R-A-E, and uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, following up on that, we've got April 20th, following up on that, uh, after that, we've got April 20th, the 420 show, and Scott has told me, you can go back and listen to last week's episode where we interviewed Maria Castillo and Scott Glover, um, this is going to be the biggest event they have ever held at pouring glory we've got a lot of important people involved with this i don't know why i said it like that important people influential folks from around the area are making big moves to ensure that this is an excellent event so we'll have more details coming out about that but april 20th out at pouring glory i would love it yeah i'm talking to you not a blanket statement you personally come out there Scott is going to put Fort Worth Roots Podcast on a stage. We're going to be broadcasting, recording, whatever, from a stage out there. They've got another stage that's going to be at the back of the yard. It's a big one. And he told me the size and whatever. I'm like, how are you going to get that in there? He's like, we got it. We can do this. <laughs> anyway, huge stage going in at the back of the uh, Dog Park Sunday yard. And uh, it's it's going to be a full blowout. Lots of really influential supporters for this one. I'm not dropping names because I don't know if I'm supposed to or what the rules are on that. But anyway, it's going to be awesome. And you need to come out March 30th and then again April 20th. That's it. All right, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. It really was fun uh, sitting here and talking with David. He's a great guy. In fact, we... Finished the recording, and I'm sitting here talking to him. I'm like, okay, we, we should not have... <laughs> the the things we were saying back and forth, I'm like, I, th this should have been on the recording. He's a wildly interesting guy and just a really good dude. And his entire family sounds like good people. So anyway, support that man. Go to uh, Instagram, David Tribble uh, Music on Instagram, at David Tribble Music. Um, and then check him out. Magnolia Motor Lounge, uh, by the time you hear this, it'll be over because 
it's Saturday. You're going to listen to this on Monday. Uh, but lots of other places that you can catch this guy doing his thing. Full-time artist now. How cool is that? It's not something that uh, everybody can pull off. But sounds like he had a, a long road of uh, connecting dots, meeting the right people, and just putting in the work. Years and years and years of it. And that's what it takes. So, all right, guys, gals, once again, big news coming uh, that just reflects your support. And I got to quit probably talking about it or I'm going to give it away. But you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your support. I'm talking to the listeners, you people right there. You, you, whatever your name is. I'm not going to guess, but I'm talking to you. Thank you for your support. And thank you for going out there and letting people know that you support Fort Worth Roots. I I can't wait to start just screaming about this. This is it's big stuff, and it's your fault. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful week, and I will see you Monday. Peace! Uh, this is a song called Leave It Like You Found It. It's off my latest album called Sunset Sunrise. I know I can be hard to take like whiskey neat on a Monday Leaving you there Wondering why But you're still hanging around You're still hanging around If you're thinking about leaving Please help Let me down easy I can't stand the soul Of you swinging for the fences Trying to get even Baby, if you do Leave it like you found it Leave it like you found it This still runs pretty well Despite her and all the hell You're still hanging around and If you're thinking about leaving Please have a heart Let me down easy. I can't stand the thought of you swinging for the fences, trying to get even. Baby, if you do, leave it like you found it. Leave it like you found it Don't go running out on me too soon Give this fighting heart a chance I'm betting on a dozen red roses That we can't work it out If you're thinking about leaving Please have a heart To let me down easy I can't stand the thought Of you swinging for the fences Trying to get even Baby, if you do just swinging for the fences trying to get even baby if you do leave it like
like you found it Leave it like you found it It still runs pretty well So leave it like you found it I'd, I'd always thought of my uncle who lived in Oklahoma when I wrote this song. Um, he was kind of hard, a hard man, but he was a really good man. And uh, I don't know, it put, it put me, it put me in his house when I wrote this song. Just thinking about maybe they had some hard days, but you know how sometimes you just gotta, you gotta kind of go down in those lower places with people and just live in, that, in those moments with them and just get through it. You know, because your love is stronger than than those low times. And uh, so and he passed. He passed uh, a little over a year ago. And uh, so I think I just dug this song back up because because of that. And uh, I'm real excited to share it. I've been playing it a lot. It's called Puddles. Looking like pain coming in out of the ring. Kicking the shoes off at the door. Sometimes I don't know what to say. Do I make you a plate? Put it on the nightstand Praying that it doesn't get cold There's puddles on the floor From where your clothes are wet And this slippery heart I've loved you from the first day we met From the kitchen to the living room See a picture of us hanging on the wall Joy and happiness fills the frame I can even see your teeth But now I'm here crying behind this door There's puddles on the floor from where your clothes are wet and this slippery heart I've loved you from the first day we met And I don't want to love anyone better than that So I'll follow you down, follow you down, follow you down I'll follow you down I'll follow you down Follow you down Follow you down I'll follow you down is high. 
heart Take some with you for the drive Looks like another rainy day outside And I'll follow you down Follow you down Follow you down I'll follow you down And I'll follow you down Follow you down Follow you down I'll follow you down Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, like I said, playing it live, playing it out a, a lot at the Magnolia Motor Lounge and things like that, and I played it in some songwriting competitions. and Yeah, it's ready, man. Yeah. It's, it's ready. I'm excited. We think got one more in you? For sure. Go. Little, uh, little Dorothy girl. This is, uh, gosh. I mean, I've been digging through my back catalog for a while now, and this is another one from my back catalog that I wrote um, after I learned about uh, uh, Judy Judy Garland. Is that, is that her name? She played uh, Dorothy girl, Dorothy in uh, Wizard of Oz. Anyway, I found out about her life and how tragic it was and how quickly it ended and I was really surprised because of her demeanor in that movie and uh, so I just I just felt like you know maybe throwing a song her way and uh, I'm sure sure she would have done a lot things a lot differently uh, had she had a chance but uh, Hollywood got a hold of her and you know it, it, it kind of took away uh, a lot and, of a song, a modernized version of, of that kind of, you know, danger of Hollywood and, and uh, fame and things like that um, that we can face. So. Stepping out of that black limousine to a man at your beck and call Everybody scream, everybody scream Screaming your name Diamonds and pearls Draped around your neck Make you look so pretty Yeah But they got your head Spinning said Dorothy girl Anymore, said Dorothy Girl. There ain't no yellow brick road, they call it Hollywood. Stepping into that club with your friends Somebody turns to you and says Hey Dorothy, why don't you take this? It'll make you feel better real quick You won't even know what's going down But you'll be on, on your way upset Can you find your way home? Can you find your way? Can you find your way, Dorothy girl? anymore Say Dorothy girl There ain't no yellow brick road They call it Hollywood Something happened when you were young I can hear it in your voice when you sing Tell me where did all that pain come from Dorothy girl She 
should not eat Kansas anymore Said Dorothy girl There ain't no yellow brick road They call it Hollywood They call it Hollywood They call it Hollywood Yes, sir. All out there, all out there. You can check out, except for that middle song, except for Puddles. Uh, Dorothy Girl's out uh, on all the streaming services. So go go spin it. Go check it out. Thank you. <laughs> 